Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor for episode 106, where I'm giving you a quick review and impressions of a 2020 Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid vehicle. Uh, let me give you my thoughts. I've actually had this for a few days. Pretty pleasant vehicle. Here's the lowdown on it. Honda's had the Clarity out for a little bit, but right now it's really only offered in the plug-in hybrid electric uh, version. Uh, there is a hydrogen fuel cell option as well that's available in California and, pot and potentially some other states, but it's in a limited quantities. Uh, so the more mass market vehicle is the plug-in hybrid electric version. Now, as you can see, the Honda Clarity is a mid-size family sedan. And for that size and offering, it actually has really good fuel efficiency when you factor in the all-electric range that you can get out of this vehicle. So it's actually leading in its class. Now, from a design perspective, I've heard some comments that people don't find it too fancy. I find it okay. I, I believe, you know, this vehicle was designed for efficiency and for comfort for the passengers. You know, really an all-around, no-drama type of sedan approach. Uh, you'll get what you get with this vehicle in a really good, well-built manner. It has pretty good interior space, actually really good interior space for the comfort of the passengers. You can definitely sit four full-size adults in here quite easily with lots of legroom, inches to spare in the back seat. Uh, even five wouldn't be too much of an issue as well. It's a very laid out, well laid out vehicle from an interior perspective. The fit and finish materials are very nice. Uh, typical Honda quality, would not expect anything less from the Honda platform, and this is no exception. Cargo area is okay. Uh, trunk could be a little bit better because there is that pass-through from the trunk to the back seats when you fold the back seats down in a 60-40 split, uh, giving you a little bit less cargo area volume that you would normally find in a uh, midsize sedan of this class. The heart of the Honda Clarity is the electric and hybrid powertrain. It does come with a uh, 1.5 liter four cylinder engine, which serves mainly as the generator for the battery in most cases. And the battery itself is a 17 kilowatt hour battery pack, lithium ion, which is heated and liquid cooled as well. And it, it's the, it's the uh, source of energy for primarily moving the vehicle. Now, when you combine these two together, you get a combined output of 212 horsepower, which can push this vehicle from zero to 60 miles an hour, or just, uh, just around 100 kilometers or so in about 7.7 .7 seconds. So certainly not fast, it's not meant to be fast, but it'll get you onto highway speeds uh, and uh, avoiding any potential situations, no problem. So as I mentioned, there are, it, it is primarily an, uh, an EV driven vehicle until the electrical power runs out, until the charge runs out, and then of course the gas engine kicks in. Now it does have three modes, it's got EV mode, hybrid mode, and a combination mode or direct drive mode as they call it. And simply put, this is really a method of operations that is unbeknownst to the driver. Uh, one thing I found about this vehicle driving it over the last few days is that it, it just works and it works very quietly. It works behind the scenes. You don't really kind of know what mode you're in unless you pay attention, look at the graphics, look at what's going on. I primarily drove this vehicle in EV only mode so I could maximize the EV range. I charged it up every day and I'll have some numbers coming up near the later part of this episode to show you what, uh, what the results were for that. Now all this combination of automatically switching between the engine and the battery pack, once the battery pack gets low, uh, the engine of course is a generator, so the, the drivetrain is still predominantly coming uh, powered from the battery pack. Uh, of course the engine can be used for heat and all kinds of other benefits from that perspective, although you're still, emission, <laughs> you're still emitting emissions when you're driving that, but less than most other vehicles, especially uh, the regular ICE vehicles that are out there. So the EPA rated range on this is uh, 48 miles or 76 kilometers. Uh, I was able to see consistently over 80. Now this is a brand new vehicle. Again, I've been lucky, I've been getting almost off the boat vehicles. This had only about 400 kilometers on it when I picked it up. So relatively new, the batteries are still probably trying to quote unquote break themselves in or balance themselves out, uh, build up some history of driving habits in order to calculate range more effectively. So, you know, I probably the range will drop a bit um, as the battery figures all that out. But in, in, the, in the few people that have driven this, um, it's still showing well over 80 kilometers range. And I was able to achieve that. So the range variance doesn't change too much from what's predicted to what you actually get. 
MPG on this is about 46 miles per gallon EPA. Again, uh, to be honest, I rarely tapped into the gas the entire week that I was driving this vehicle. Only on a couple of trips where I exceeded the battery pack, um, I, uh, I dipped into the gas tank. So I couldn't tell you, couldn't really register any MPG because I reset everything when I picked up the car. Now, as I mentioned on the interior space, this has a wheelbase that is uh, shorter than the um, Honda Accord, but the interior room is greater than the Honda Accord. So they do a nice job for packaging this. I won't go through all the infotainment and stuff because there's tons of videos and user manuals and online guides for this stuff. But this is the Touring package, which has the upgraded infotainment system, which is 8-inch 8, 8 touchscreen center. Um, it does have uh, uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support as all well. pretty well everything is coming with now. I found it okay. I just found it okay. A little lackluster, maybe a little dated. Uh, the menuing system is a you know typical. It's a little overcomplicated in my opinion. I think they could have simplified it a little bit more. But I was able to navigate and find anything. Now, one thing I was not able to find in this vehicle was the audio controls as far as setting the fader and the balance and maybe an equalizer or two, a bass treble, all that kind of stuff. But I couldn't find it anywhere. Even went online and looked for it. The tab that they tells you it's supposed to be there is not there on this infotainment system. So maybe because this is so new, they haven't done a software update maybe to add that feature to it. But one simple fact is I could not, all I could do is turn the audio on or off, change stations of course, select sources and um, uh, mute it if I needed to. And then of course do the volume up and down, but I couldn't do any settings, which is kind of weird. But anyway, it's a decent audio system, sounds good, but I would have liked to have a bit more control of it. Now, most modern cars today have advanced safety features, and the Honda Clarity, of course, is included into that segment. Um, it does have various driver assist technologies. Uh, they call it Honda Sensing, so that's how they package all these technologies and offerings. Things like automated emergency braking, lane departure warning, um, and assist keeping, of course, adaptive cruise control, your standard stuff. Now, it also has something called Honda Lane Watch, which was kind of unique, but um, different in the same uh, token. So this doesn't have full blind, blind spot monitoring. What it does is on the passenger side mirror, there's a camera placed underneath that. And every time you turn your right signal to, to make a turn, the camera comes on and shows you your blind spot from the, from the camera back to the back view of the car and beyond. Nice from that perspective. However, that's the only blind spot. There's no yellow, uh, there's no beeping that I could find. There's no indicators on the mirrors that light up when a car is in your blind spot. None of that. It's only on the right side and it's only that particular function where the camera. Now you can activate that camera without the right turn signal. There's a button on the stock to do that if you want to see what's beside you for whatever reason. If you want to just wave at somebody, I don't know, but it's got that. It's a, it's a unique feature, but I would rather see full blind spot monitoring more in the traditional way. I love having the camera and I would love to see a 360 or more cameras on this vehicle to give you complete coverage. Standard warranty and maintenance for North America is a traditional OEM's approach for that. You've got your limited warranty at uh, 36,000 miles or 60,000 kilometers. Uh, you've got your um, five year comprehensive powertrain at 60,000 miles, 100,000 kilometers. And then of course the hybrid components, including the battery pack and the EV motors and the drivetrain associated with that are eight years, 100,000 miles, 160,000 kilometers, which is standard. Now my test came in this crimson red color, which Honda calls it. I don't believe it's offered for the 2021 model year, but you might still be able to find them. But from a pricing perspective, it is decently priced. Um, you can get the base MSRP at $46,306 Canadian or the touring package, which you see here at just over 50,000. Now that does include PDI and your fees in that number, similar to Tesla pricing and many others. So your taxes would be extra, of course. And this vehicle is eligible for up to $5,000 here in Canada for the Canadian federal tax credit. That brings the price down to potentially just around 50,000 for the fully loaded tax in, uh, or maybe even slightly less. So my overall driving thoughts, I've been uh, tuning this car around for the last few days. Uh, it's a very pleasant car to drive. It's, uh, doesn't, it's not awe-inspiring, it's not supposed to be. It's a very practical four-door family mid-size sedan, a lot of good cargo space, uh, very good seating, uh, very comfortable, quiet as you can hear. I'm doing almost 80 kilometers an hour um, and it's uh, very, very quiet within this uh, vehicle. Um, here's some footage of me driving on the highway showing you the um, lane keep assist.
So as you can see, the Honda system isn't bad. Um, you know, it does pretty do a pretty good job for that. I've mentioned, I'll mention some of the shortcomings uh, that I think of this vehicle coming up at the end of this episode. The only other thing I'll add to my driving experience overall is the pedestrian warning sound. It's um, it's pretty loud <laughs> by comparison. Um, and with the windows down and you're going slow, you know, putting, pulling into your garage or creeping down at stop and go traffic, uh, it's pretty loud. And I know it's designed to be that, but it can be, to me, it started to annoy me a little bit later on in the week. I guess just the fact. around the week. I guess just a matter of time before I would it would become just white noise for me and I wouldn't recognize it uh, if I were driving this car all the time. Uh, that would probably be the only thing. Other, th other than that, this is a very comfortable, capable, and competent vehicle uh, for those wanting to get more electrified. So as you can see, I, I'm pleasantly surprised about the Honda Clarity, but I really shouldn't be surprised because Honda builds really, really good vehicles. So I shouldn't be surprised on the fit and finish, the quietness, just the overall operation of the vehicle is, is really nice, you know, from that perspective. Now I do, of course, have some pros and cons that I wanted to pick out, and I could be a bit nitpicky on this, but hear me out. So from some of the pros, it does have a really smooth, good ride. It could be a bit too smooth for some people, it might be a little bit shallow in the feedback from the road, but that's not a bad thing. Um, the fit and finish, as I mentioned, is, is solid. I mean, nothing rattling, squeaking, any of that kind of stuff. And the materials seem to be high end. It gives you a very pleasant experience inside the cabin of being looked after from with a little bit of luxury thrown in. It's roomy, as I've mentioned, lots of uh, room for people to sit comfortably in. You can stretch out even. Uh, and I, you know, I, you saw me getting in the back seat with uh, with the front seat the way I would have it to drive, and I've actually got it quite back, so tons of room there. It's uncomplicated in the EV hybrid operation. It's really something that is designed for consumers to get into and not worry about. Set it on EV mode, it remembers that mode, it goes and it continues to, to keep it in EV mode. What you want to do is maximize that battery time as much as possible and that, and that zero emission experience as much as you can. And this gives you enough range to be pretty good for a lot of daily use cases. And the pricing with the incentives here in Canada can make this a very attractive vehicle for those who are still not sold on the all electric uh, vehicle concept and want to take that plunge or worried about range anxiety and all this other stuff. Uh, this is a, a good compromise vehicle to do that and you can with the incentives get it at a good price. Um, a little while ago it was hard to find these but I did a quick search before filming and I, I was able to find lots of these at Honda dealerships or on various lots throughout the GTA here, Greater Toronto Area, and I'm sure in other parts of the country, especially the major urban areas, you'll be able to find one as well. Now, some of the cons for this vehicle, again, I could be nitpicking, the regen. There is paddles on the steering wheel to activate, uh, to, there's four settings for the regen. It does come with a slight regen automatically set, so you can't truly coast without any regen. It does give you a regen all the time, but it's very slight. If you want to increase that more to, to capture more energy, you would use these paddle shifters. Now, at, once you activate it and you're coasting or you're braking and you stop, whatever the case is, or once you hit the accelerator and start going again, that uh, disengages. So the last setting you had for regen is gone. It just goes back to the, the factory uh, res, uh, default of just a little bit. And I found that kind of annoying because I would have liked to kind of drive in the vehicle with maybe, you know, level one or level two or level three, whatever the different levels are, and leave it at that level based on my driving preference. But every time you start accelerating or, um, or, or you stop for a couple of minutes or a minute or whatever, it just stops. So I found that to be kind of anti 
uh, electric, if that makes sense, because the whole purpose of driving electric is to maximize the battery as much as you can, even in a plug-in hybrid. And if I can get pretty good, if I can get, you know, five or six kilometers back just from regen in a daily drive, why wouldn't I want to? This means I got to always constantly play with the paddle to try to maximize re regen depending on the situation. And I would have liked to have been to have it set and forget it and remember that setting. So that's one little pet peeve on this one from a con. I mentioned the infotainment. It's not that intuitive. It does take a little bit of drilling and reading to find what you're looking for. Uh, and I mentioned about my audio uh, instance that I couldn't find and change some of the audio settings. And finally, I mentioned the blind spot monitoring. I really would love to see a full blind spot uh, monitoring operation here and full cameras. Because when you get into bigger cars, it's nice to have cameras to help them back up. We see them on pickup trucks. We see them on SUVs. All This has a rear backup camera, which is okay. You can change a couple of the angles of the camera. Uh, but other than that, there's really nothing else other than that blind spot. So I would like to see more. Well, in closing, my final comments really, uh, do I recommend this vehicle? Hey, absolutely. You know me, I like anything that has a plug, almost anything anyway. It's got, I think the key for here, it's got a really big enough battery pack from a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle perspective to do a lot of daily use driving. I did a lot of uh, driving, just going back and forth to work. When I picked up the vehicle, did some running around yesterday, went for a drive, and I barely tapped into the gas engine. I did charge it up every night, which would have cost me pennies because it doesn't, you know, doesn't take more than a couple of hours to charge this at 10 cents a kilowatt hour that I'm that I'm paying. So that makes it really economical as far as driving. You could run this on pennies a day or at least the majority, keep you the majority of your driving with an EV mode, with the exception of warming up and things like that. So I think it's a good vehicle for that. There are some shortcomings, but I, again, like anything, there's always going to be a bit of a trade-off in, in any vehicle that you look at. So yeah, the 2020-2021 Honda Clarity is a pick for my book. If anybody's interested in looking at this vehicle, I certainly encourage you to look very seriously at it. You won't be disappointed. It's a great vehicle for what it offers. And also wanted to not forget to thank Honda Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle for a few days. Uh, it's been a great experience. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Hope you enjoyed uh, my quick take on the 2020 Honda Clarity. Uh, thanks everybody for watching on YouTube, for subscribing and for providing feedback. If you own one of these, I'd love to hear your experience. Put it in the comments. Let me know if you're interested in looking. Let me know what that experience is like. And if you end up getting one, I'd love to hear from you as well. Humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. You guys know who you are. Names are always at the end of the show. Uh, I'm just every every month I'm humbled and, and we, we talk, we dialogue with some of, the, some of you out there. Just love to hear from you. Thank you very much. If you're interested in a couple bucks a month, anything you think you want to contribute to the show, uh, you can check out the Patreon webpage and uh, get all the details there. Of course, PSA, everybody stay safe during these times. Follow your local health guidelines. Hey, lots of stuff going on in the EV Revolution marketplace. Uh, keep continuing to watch the shows. I've got another auto review that I'll be starting next week uh, and then another one hopefully following that. So it's a busy month here in September. You've seen some of the AJAC Eco Month hashtags posts that I've been doing. It's a, it's a month for us AJAC journalists here to go out and promote uh, eco-friendly vehicles and, uh, and, and side benefits to the automotive marketplace. So you'll see a lot of that from me and, and I'm glad. It really helped to get the awareness out for a lot of consumers uh, here in Canada, but of course, uh, I talk to people all around the world. So thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, everybody stay safe and I'll see you when I see you. Take care, bye-bye.